The headlines, U.S. says Sunday's attack on Afghanistan, a resounding success, but warned the operation will not end in Afghanistan. Human error and bad weather, not terrorist attack, the cause of Scandinavian airline crash in Milan. Good morning. It's good to see you again. The United States has warned the Security Council it could take further actions against other countries after Sunday's military strikes on Afghanistan. In a letter sent to the UN Security Council, the Bush administration said the US self-defense may require further actions with respect to other organizations and other states. US President George W. Bush, meanwhile, said Sunday's military operation was executed as planned. Earlier in the day, Afghanistan's hardline Taliban government vowed to avenge Sunday's attacks against its territory. The assaults reportedly caused considerable damage in and around Kabul, according to London. There has been conflicting reports on the death toll, ranging from six to eight, as claimed by the Taliban Health Ministry, to more than 25, as reported by the Afghan Islamic Press Agency. The U.S. and Britain late Sunday attacked Taliban targets in Afghanistan with missiles and bombs in what is believed to be a start of a sustained campaign against Osama bin Laden and his terrorist network. Three waves of attacks were reportedly carried out involving the capital Kabul, the Taliban stronghold of Kandahar, the eastern city of Jalalabad, western Herat and northern city of Mazar-e-Sharif. British Defence Secretary Geoff Hoon claimed the Allied air and missile raids hit 30 targets, including terrorist training camps, military airfields and air defence sites. But the Taliban's ambassador in neighbouring Pakistan, Abu Salam Zaev, said civilians, women, children and the elderly were killed in the illegal and unprincipled raids. Last night's attack on the sacred soil of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan by the United States and by the British forces was a direct violation and a terrorist action done by the tyrant United States of America. The United States of America, keeping this pride for itself, is making oppression on the oppressed and poor people of the world in Afghanistan. Zaif added Osama and Taliban spiritual leader Mullah Muhammad Omar survived the attacks, although the Saudi billionaire had not been in touch since. The attacks also triggered an exodus of civilians from Kabul. U.S. President George W. Bush in the meantime heralded the attacks on Afghanistan as a sustained, comprehensive and relentless campaign against terrorists. We're a peaceful nation. Yet as we have learned so suddenly and so tragically, there can be no peace in a world of sudden terror. In the face of today's new threat, the only way to pursue peace is to pursue those who threaten it. We did not ask for this mission, but we will fulfill it. Yesterday's actions were carried out by two NATO allies. Other NATO allies have pledged direct military support as this operation unfolds. The alliance itself will continue to provide military and other support to consult on the implications for its security and to take whatever defensive measures are necessary. We sent delegation there. We tried our utmost, but unfortunately, may I say, may I accept that we could not achieve what we were trying with them. And therefore, the action which started last night. On behalf, uh, I know, of the great majority of the Australian people, I express very strong support for the action initiated by the Americans and supported by British forces. It is regrettable, but the Americans have been extremely patient under incredible provocation. The European Union also reportedly backed the military action along with Bahrain, Jordan, Israel, Russia, Japan and China. But others such as Iran, Indonesia, Sudan and several Muslim groups denounced the strikes. 
we consider that uh, uh, action against uh, Afghanistan uh, is uh, an attack to Islam. They are acting against uh, Muslims uh, and uh, uh, under the cover of uh, what they called uh, they are acting against terror. So we are with our brothers uh, there and we feel that uh, uh, America will not succeed in its war against Islam. The Palestinian Authority, however, withheld official reaction. In principle, we are against terror and we are against any attacks targeted to, to uh, civilians. Uh, we don't have any clear-cut evidence uh, that, that the bin Laden was involved in the uh, terrorist attacks in New York and Washington, which we had uh, strongly condemned and we expressed our condolences to the American people and the administration. Reacting to Sunday's U.S.-led military strike on Afghanistan, Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said Malaysia did not support the attack because innocent people would be killed. He said war on nations harboring terrorism would not solve the problem. Ini belum lagi sampai tahap all-out war. Walaupun demikian kita tidak uh, kita tidak kita berpendapat bahawa Dianya tidak mungkin berkesan kerana mungkin kebanyakan daripada pengganas-pengganas ini berada di luar daripada Afghanistan uh, dan kita tidak akan mengambil apa-apa tindakan ataupun memberi apa-apa sokongan dalam musuh ini. Datuk Sri Dr. Mahathir said Sunday's attacks should not be seen as an assault against Muslims. Well, as far as I can see, they are not attacking Muslims as such. If they are attacking Muslims, then there are Muslims all over the world. Then they should be uh, attacking all the Muslims. Uh, so their stand is, I think, still very clear that they are attacking what they believe to be terrorists. But he stressed the need to address the fundamental causes of terrorism, such as the oppression of Muslims in the Palestinian territories, Iraq and Chechnya. Meanwhile, security at the U.S. Embassy in the federal capital was tighter than usual, with more police personnel deployed at the compound of the mission. The embassy said police were also patrolling areas with communities of Americans and other foreigners. The United States, it added, was aware of no specific threat against American interests in Malaysia, private or public. The recognized Afghan government in exile, led by Burhanuddin Rabbani, has described the attacks as a good sign in toppling the Taliban. Its charge d'affaires in Malaysia, Abdul Sata Murad, told Nightline's Josephine Das, the split within the Taliban also augurs well for the rebuilding of Afghanistan. Abdul Sata said although the attacks were launched against the Taliban, the collateral damage is rather little. He, however, said Washington's military action was timely as the Rabani-led government believed the Taliban regime could only be eliminated through force. We see this as an opportunity. The only opportunity which has presented itself to Afghan nation to be hopeful for a peaceful and a stable future for Afghanistan. In other words, you welcome the move? Definitely. Abdul Sata, however, stressed the importance for Washington to exercise caution so as not to victimize innocent Afghans in its quest to track down the terrorists. Uh, you cannot pull out sometimes because the war is after all war. And you can always make a mistake and you can uh, cause a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. But the intentions and the planning is such that uh, civilian areas should be avoided. According to Abdul Sata, various steps had been taken to overcome the Taliban issue, including those involving the United Nations and the Organization of Islamic Conference, OIC, but unsuccessful. While there are concerns that legal and diplomatic channels should have been used to bring the terrorists to justice, others, however, say that the U.S. is not trying to retaliate, but to ensure the safety and freedom of the people of the world. What remains to be seen 
is the effectiveness in the U.S. move to combat terrorism and threats of violence through this strategy. Josephine Das, Nightline, TV3. Meanwhile, the reaction from expatriates and foreign tourists in Malaysia was mixed. Foreigners whom Nightline spoke to expressed strong support for Sunday's military strikes against the Taliban, saying firm military action was the only solution towards curbing terrorism. I think um, at the end of the day, uh, something's going to have to be done by military force no matter what. Um, I can see that military action is the only way for it to be done. I think it was just a matter of time, basically. Uh, obviously, uh, you, you feel for the Afghan people, but I think the government, the Taliban government, have uh, you know, not co cooperated with uh, you know, the Americans and the British, so I think it was yeah. inevitable. However, there were those who believed otherwise, saying the U.S. should exhaust every avenue to tackle the issue before launching any military attack. I don't think that Osama bin Laden and his group did that attack to states. They should do more investigations. They think about that because they should accept the reaction of Arab people and Muslim people. I think it's a very important the Islam organization must sit them together and talk about this problem and discuss this problem of peace concept, not of war. This just in, a second wave of airstrikes against Afghanistan began just minutes ago, according to a Pentagon official. This was confirmed by U.S. defense officials and U.S. satellite television network CNN. Catch the details in Brita Takini at 1 a.m. Sultan Mizan Zainal Abidin proclaimed the acting Yang Dipertuan Agong. Speak zero one nine prepaid. Often bank credit cards. Recognition you deserve. Seven Pool Challenge brings you exciting action in Pool Championship. Witness real cool skills and smooth shots from the world's best players. In the World Pool Trick Shot Master. Every Wednesday, 11 p.m. TV3. Brought to you by Mile 7. Take it further. Thanks for staying with us. The Sultan of Trengganu, Sultan Mizan Zainal Abidin, was on Monday proclaimed the acting Yang Dipertuan Agung at a ceremony at Istana Trengganu in the federal capital. The 39-year-old monarch, who is the deputy Yang Dipertuan Agung, signed the proclamation, which was witnessed by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Mahali Muhammad. Under Article 33 of the Federal Constitution, the Deputy Yang Dipertuan Agung will carry out the functions of the Yang Dipertuan Agung if the monarch is incapacitated, ill or outside of the Federation of Malaysia. The proclamation was read by Datuk Sri Dr. Mahade. Also present at the ceremony were Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Abdullah Ahmad Badawi, Chief Secretary to the Government Tan Sri Samsudin Osman and Trungganu Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Abdul Hadi Awang. Datuk Sri Dr. Mahade later said the Yang Dipertuan Agong Sultan Salahuddin Abdul Aziz Shah is recuperating after minor surgery on Saturday at a Singapore hospital. Dia boleh, the operation successful. Tapi pasal umur dia, dia nampak uh, letih sikit saja. Tapi doktor kata keadaan baik. The Human Resources Ministry intends to take appropriate 
system against employers who fail to abide by the new occupational health and safety regulation which came into effect on Monday. Its minister, Datu Dr. Fong Chan On, said the government's one-year grace period for employers to make the necessary changes had expired and it was time for the ministry to take action. Dr. Dr. Fong on Monday launched the Occupational Health and Safety Regulations Enforcement Program. The regulations covered some 20,000 firms registered throughout the country. The minister said although the new occupational safety and health regulations dealing with the use and standard of exposure of chemicals hazardous to health was exerted on April 4th last year, the government gave the grace period so that employers could prepare themselves. The aim is to reduce the accident rate is to require the employers to provide the necessary protective gear, uh, provide the necessary information with regards to the health risk of any use of chemicals. One more than a year after the gazetting, we feel it's time now to be enforced. This being the case, Dr. Dr. Fong said full compliance by companies, especially those producing chemicals, could reduce occupational illness and provide a better quality of life to the workers. The Department of Occupational Safety and Health will, make the will conduct the necessary investigations, checks to ensure that uh, all work sites are in compliance with the regulation. The regulations were gazetted as a final piece in laws which govern the control and use of dangerous chemicals, as nearly 70% of claims made to SOXO were due to illnesses as a result of exposure to such materials. The Election Commission, EC, expects to gazette the September 27th State Sarawak election results in two weeks. State Election Officer Wan Alwi Wan Hashim said the necessary documents have been sent to the EC headquarters in Kuala Lumpur for verification and endorsement before being gazetted. According to Wan Alwi, candidates or election agents wishing to file election petitions could do so within 21 days after the gazetting. Wan Alwi also said the election post-mortem would be done next month. Although the state election conducted in just one day, the first ever in Sarawak election history was a major success for the EC, there were some weaknesses that need to be rectified, he said. The Barisan Nasional was returned to power with a landslide victory in the election, winning 60 of the 62 seats at stake. The DAP and an independent won a seat each. On to the stock market report. Share prices on the Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange closed broadly lower Monday in reaction to the ongoing U.S.-led strikes against key targets in Afghanistan. At the close, the benchmark composite index lost 9.23 points, or 1.52%, to finish just below the 600-point mark. The MS index, meanwhile, shed 2.48 points to end at 143.85. Losers overwhelmed gainers by 682 to 53, with another 61 counters flat. Turnover for the day stood at 151 million shares, valued at 215 million ringgit. On Wall Street, U.S. blue chip stocks were lower in early trade, with investors staying on the sidelines, weighing news of the U.S.-led retaliatory strikes in Afghanistan. About an hour after Monday's opening bell, the closely watched Dow Jones Industrial Average slipped 87 points, or almost 1%, at 9,032. And over at the foreign exchange market, most major currencies except for the Singapore dollar and pound sterling closed higher on Monday against the ringgit as market participants reacted to U.S. attacks on Afghanistan.
life will change because of technology. But at Max's, we don't think technology is all that special. Life is. Pantai Desa Ru kembali bergelora. Acara sukan antarabangsa multi-sport event menguji kekuatan mental dan fizikal. Sukan yang diiktiraf oleh Persekutuan Triathlon Asia dan Persatuan Triathlon Malaysia. Wang tunai RM70,000 menjadi rebutan. Saksikan Desaru International Long Distance and Spring Cyclone 2001 pada hari Selasa 9 Oktober 2001 pukul 12.30 malam. Tentunya di TV3. Malaysian Resources Corporation Berhad MRCB and its associate company TV3 have unveiled plans to create the biggest integrated media group in the country. The plan is part of MRCB and TV3's joint restructuring scheme to put the companies back in the black. MRCB has debts of about 567 million ringgit, while TV3 714 million ringgit. The country's first private television station also faces the possibility of being delisted from the KLSE following its negative shareholders fund. On Monday, MRCB and TV3's top management briefed the media on how they are going to solve the problem. The exercise will see the demerging of the company's media-related and non-media activities. The final objective is to group TV3, New Straits Times Press, NSTP and MRCB's multimedia businesses under one new entity. This will create a single largest media group in Malaysia with combined media revenues in excess of 650 million ringgit. Abdul Rahman, who is also TV3's executive director, said the figure is easily the largest share in the market. With its activities streamlined, MRCB can now strengthen its position as the premier construction and infrastructure group in the country. TV3's debt restructuring will, meanwhile, involve a capital reduction of 60%. The scheme will also propose that creditors take a 30% haircut. 21% of the debt will be paid in cash, 35% will be converted to equity, while 14% in redeemable unsecured loan stocks, RULS. The scheme also entails the transfer of TV3's listing status to the new integrated media company, at the moment referred to as NewCo. There are four different kinds of trout. The blue trout is plentiful in American waters. The rainbow trout is found in cold, clear waters. The brown trout is found along rivers in USA. And finally, in Malaysia, catch jack trout at the Differentiate or Die Seminar, October 11th, Holiday Villa Subang. Presented by the 4As of Malaysia, supported by TV3. Mal Salmon Pool Challenge brings you exciting action in pool championship. Witness real cool skills and smooth shots from the world's best players. In the World Pool Trick Shot Master. Every Wednesday, 11 p.m. TV3. Brought to you by Mile 7. Take it further. Pantai Desaru kembali bergelora. Acara sukan antarabangsa multi-sport event menguji kekuatan mental dan fizikal. Sukan yang diiktiraf oleh Persekutuan Triathlon Asia dan Persatuan Triathlon Malaysia. Wang tunai RM70,000 menjadi rebutan. Saksikan Desaru International Long Distance and Spring Triathlon 2001 pada hari Selasa 9 Oktober 2001 pukul 12.30 malam. Tentunya di TV3. You're still with us on Nightline. At least 114 people have been killed in a runway collision at Milan's Linate Airport between a Scandinavian Airlines SAS jet and a small Cessna plane. Italy's interior ministry said the tragedy was almost certainly caused by a combination of human error and heavy fog. According to initial reports, SAS flight SK-686 was preparing to take off for Copenhagen and was approaching takeoff speed when it hit the Cessna, which had apparently crossed its path. 
The Cessna, with two German pilots and two Italian passengers on board, had been cleared for departure to Paris and was taxiing to the takeoff point, but did not follow the route it had given to air traffic control. The SAS plane, an MD-87, hit the Cessna before plowing off the runway and careering into a baggage handling warehouse and splitting in two. Officials said the plane would then burst into flames. The Danish jetliner was carrying about 104 passengers and six crew members, while another four of the dead were aboard the Cessna. Police have cordoned off the airport, which was close to air traffic in the immediate aftermath of the crash. On to sports football, the 2002 World Cup qualifying matches. The United States defeated Jamaica 2-1 to secure their fourth consecutive World Cup finals berth. The victory assured the U.S. of finishing among the top three nations in the CONCACAF region. The U.S. took a confident step towards the finals with a goal from Joe Max Moore in the fourth minute. But the Jamaicans came back strongly to draw level in the 14th minute with an effort from James Lawrence. With the score tied one all at the break, both teams went all out for the winning goal. It finally came in the 81st minute when the referee awarded a penalty after Landon Donovan was taken down in the box. Moore coolly converted the spot kick for the final 2-1 victory for the United States. Dulux Weather Shield, guaranteed against cracking, peeling and fungus, also dirt resistant. Before we close, here's Tuesday's newspaper headlines. Dozens killed in U.S.-led attack on Afghanistan. That's Brita Haryan's pick. PMR examinations to be scrapped. In New Straits Times, U.S.-led attack on Afghanistan claims 25 lives. And Kuala Lumpur opposes Sunday's military operation. With that item, we end this edition of Nightline. Thanks for being with us and till we meet again. Take good care.